This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This guy is just money. Everything he has to say was with wisdom. He cared so much. And then to hear something happen, I'm like, no. Please tell me this isn't like Ravi Zacharias. Is there something unique that's going on right now? Or is it just coincidence that these things are all popping up? You hear the phrase, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think you can flip that and it also works where broken people are drawn to that power. That's a stoner (laughs) question. Yeah. Dude, what if... (laughs) (laughs) Bro, have you thought about this? <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. It's episode 240. This is Jeff. Zach, how's it going? I don't even know what to say. Excellent. Andy? Uh, the experiment has concluded. Fantastic. <laughs> I I was lost, but now I am found. I am back! Woo! I'm back, baby! Should we be clapping Golf. too? <laughs> Is this a monkey golf clap? One thing you missed while you were out, Jeff, yes. is that uh, Zach hit the shit out of his microphone as much as he could. It was like Mike Tyson and Logan Paul's upcoming fight. Look at it in his face right now. You, 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 you stop that. <laughs> He's the worst podcaster ever. Well... Keep touching it. Some say. There's no reason <laughs> to even touch it. Why are you even touching it? It's, just, it's fine. It's something. You're fine. Something. Just okay. talk. Just use your use your voice. Use your words. Okay. <laughs> do, do, you, do you need Jill to move the microphone yeah, what for is you? Happening? <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Welcome back, Jeff. Jeff we missed thank you. you. Where the hell have it you been? It has been forever. I know. I'm sure you listened to the episode you missed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> the seat is cold. I'm warming it up presently okay it's been a while where were you where have you been okay uh so i was probably a wall for a week or two and then i was in reno gambling or something like that baseball tournaments and gambling. those are two very gambling on youth baseball <laughs> he, was, <Okay. laughs> nice. he was gambling in on youth baseball in <laughs> reno that's the story that we want to hear yes i like that and so it's 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 got to be at least a month. So I'm I'm happy to be back. I'm excited. I'm pumped, and uh, my tummy's full, and and uh, the jello's jiggling. Okay, <laughs> you're like a shitty chick hern right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back, boys. It's excellent. What do we? I know we don't usually do this, but what are we drinking tonight? Because you you got some radiant. Couple know, of radiance. I know we don't do this, but I'm interested. Yeah, in we this. don't. I got reflections of the sun IPA. It's nice. I like it. And uh, solid. Is that what you got? Or you got the um, you whatever the, the pilsner? Are they all the same? Nope. That's oh. an IPA. That's a German style pilsner. Ooh. Which is called something that I can't read from here. All right. And I have a sacrilegious Woodford Reserve because it's diluted with ice. It's a non-alcoholic Woodford Reserve in honor of Art Greco. So. Thank I'll you. take a 50-50 melted ice and booze. <laughs> All right. Well, Things. so I think we got we got listener feedback coming up at the end of the show. Yes. Stay tuned and whatnot. But it seems like uh, church scandals, they keep it happening. Dude, there's, uh, there's been a few of them that are occurring. And as... As we like started looking into some of this stuff, it made me even wonder. Like, gosh, dude, are Christian churches trying to play catch up right now to the Catholic Church in terms of these like <laughs> sexual scandals? Because it's getting it. It's disappointing. It feels inev- it's embarrassing. It feels inevitable. Gross. Though. It, like the shoe will drop, and it will continue to drop. I hope it's not Be- inevitable. Humans are not perfect, and pastors are not perfect, and they're not high and mighty and above everyone else and they make mistakes yeah but sometimes this a- make some some make worse mistakes than others thank you, thank you for saying yeah that. this is like the worst of mistakes though man <laughs> this is pretty gross it's not like oh um, we did maybe you didn't list everything on your taxes in our last episode on whether or not the church is the biggest cause of atheism uh, we did mention was it tony jones no that's a different Evans? guy Tony Evans. Thank you. Tony Jones is another pastor who I think he's the hunting pastor or the outdoors pastor, not associated with any scandals. (laughs) So as far as I know, um, 
Tony Evans, who wrote a book on fatherhood, right? I think he has a He's big- He's written a lot of yeah, books. Yeah, and a big church. For a long time. Kingdom yeah. Man. Yes, yeah. so all of it. He got a brief mention, and we did mention Robert Morris from Gateway Church, whom we will, we will be talking about a little more. Um, but we didn't go in depth at all, but they were just two examples of recent headlines right. of why the church, why people get this, whether atheism is real, that's not the point is like whether people actually become atheists. When people leave the church because of these types of people, this yeah. file all of it under that. And so, yeah, they got honorable mentions, but still, I don't know what the sin was that Tony Evans. It's vague. It's not um, there. There's nothing. Apparently that's been one said. of his kids said, I don't even know the sin. So Tony Evans has stepped away from his church. He, he cited that there was some, be, due to some sin that he had committed in his past. In fact, I think it was in his past, like a, a long time ago, as in he's been living with it up until now. Now, that's something I don't understand when you say, I now need to heal and... Yeah, what changed? Re- like It's too vague. This is the no, stuff it, that drives me it's nuts. It's up in the air. And I, I hope... I th- hope things are well for him and that he experiences healing and restoration. But, um, you know, depending on what it is, like it's, it's time for you to be done depending on what it is. I don't, I, know, what, I don't know what it is. And I've loved, I mean, for years I've listened to Tony Evans preach Tony Evans, especially the first time I heard him was on, um, focus on the family and it was just talking about, you know, being a, a great husband and a father and just i'm like dude i love this guy and he's like i was the ch- you know chaplain for the dallas cowboys i'm like oh man this guy is just money it, it's everything he has to say was with wisdom and he he cared so much and he does care and then to hear something happen i'm like no no this please tell me this isn't down the vein of like ravi zacharias who i also was you know, that was somebody who I just, I listened to so much and, and, and took a lot away from that. So I'm worried. I'm worried what the, what the sin will be. I, I certainly hope everything is not as bad as it might seem. I think we should be worried about you, Jeff, because all of the people that you <laughs> listen to <laughs> crash and burn every Christian leader who's poured into your life has now turned out to be. Maybe uh, your pickers off. Yeah, maybe Jeff. your pickers <laughs> off. Your spiritual leader picker. Uh, okay, so the, the this recent one, uh, Gateway Church in Dallas. I think Robert Morris is oh, the is real the quick. One. Oh yeah, real quick. The uh, I love stepping down due to sin, which is what you see in the headline. Tony Evans steps down due to sin. It's like, oh, I guess nobody's allowed to be a pastor now. Be specific, people. Like B E specific B E S P E. And another thing is that the weird thing was that preface it with there was no crime. He, he literally like there's no crime, but there was sin. I'm like, what? But there is a body in the ground. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't feel like I I really did try, treated this righteously. Maybe he's like, like old school. What is going on? Like old school law. He's like he spilled a seed on the ground. Oh, Ooh. oh, and he just feels really, really. I'm making light of something that probably is not worth making light of. Probably not. Yeah. It is a fun little story in the Bible that where... Don't waste your seed. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Don't don't pull out. You can imagine if trees with little kids grew up out (laughs) 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 I'm sorry. That's so stupid. Oh, listener, I'm sorry. I'm Andy Apples. I'm part human. That's a stoner question. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, what if? <laughs> Bro, have you thought about this? <laughs> you could make a bunch of baby trees. But I mentioned it last time. The vagueness of things only leads to... Conjecture, m- speculation. Yes. Yeah. And oftentimes it's true, and there's a reason they're being vague, and it gets confirmed later. Just rip the Band-Aid off, people. You're you're not garnering trust or anything by saying, yeah, he, he, Moral failure, sin. Well, you- some, yeah, something's happened. The elders have addressed it with him, and and now he's taking steps to do whatever. I mean, in terms of uh, just need to take a break it, in layman's terms. It feels like the go tos in Christian leadership are sexual impropriety and some sort of emotional abuse. Like those, those are the 
the the real sweet spots that Christian leadership likes to lean into. Yeah, because generally you're not going to get fired for for pride or self righteousness. Oftentimes, like the most powerful, strongest leaders that struggle with self righteousness are the ones that come off as like authoritative and they're they're convicted and they they so, speak with strength and whatnot. So what is it like? What is, is there a common denominator? Why do we see? Well, in general, why why do we see these things? Lots in the Catholic Church, but why does it feel like all of a sudden we're getting a spike in this area with Christian uh, Christian leaders? What what causes that? Actually, it's it's kind of two questions. What causes that in general? And then and is there something unique that's going on right now, or is it just coincidence that these things are all popping up cl- in close uh, um, proximity? G- good question. I church hashtag church two comes to mind when the Me Too movement happened. Um, there was a movement of church too, where people were coming, kind of coming out of the closet. Uh, I don't know if that's the right, that's probably not, it's probably technically the right phrase, but I don't mean it in the, in a gay way. Uh, but coming out of the closet of like, Hey, I was abused by this person. There's like strength in numbers. And so when there's a movement, there will be a certain percentage of people that will abuse that movement as we've seen with some of the Me, me too and church too stuff where the accusations weren't really there weren't wasn't something there but for the ones that it's real all of a sudden like oh my goodness there are other people coming out with i have a story too about when i was mm-hmm. abused when i was hurt um so, so it, i i feel s- some courage courage and then the media is a different animal where maybe the media starts okay this is a thing now so now we will focus more on it because the unfortunate thing is that these things there's these things are always happening. I mean, the broad, it the, seems like it. it. It seems like it. And the important thing to note, note is that the majority of the church is directionally good. And kind of like, kind of like Twitter. If you think Twitter or the worst parts of Instagram, <laughs> the church is no. like Twitter. Let me finish. It's, me finish. It's, it's I'm not phrasing the same. this well. Uh, use your words properly, Zach. It's they're both owned by Elon. <laughs> yes. No, but full of trolls. If all your experience of humanity is Twitter and the worst aspects of it, you'll think the world is falling apart. And True. the good news is that's not real life. And when people interact in person, they're very different than they are online. So it's kind of a fake thing. So with these abuse stories, I'm not saying they're fake. The abuse needs to be rooted out and eliminated and people need to pay the punishment for their crimes where they, they exist but the church in general, I don't believe, is a place that is rampant with abuse. Yeah. But if you all you do is spend time in like in church abuse circles, all, that's sure. all you're going to see. Confirmation and bias. Think, yes. Right. Yeah. I just bought a yellow Camaro. Now I only see yellow Camaros everywhere. Thank you. Now I will see yellow Camaros everywhere. And so will you, listener. <laughs> I bought a Prius, but I keep seeing Teslas everywhere. So oh, it doesn't yeah, really fit. You get a little sad. That's like a dashboard confessional moment. Jeff used to have a Tesla. Your listener. hair is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the ex girlfriend around 90s, town, nineties and two thousands reference. Yeah, two thousands. Um, okay. Uh, I do, I do agree that that there was, um, there's probably some percentage of folks who have some level of hurt, and and they will try to categorize themselves into the larger, more deeper levels of hurt. So it's 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 glomming on to. Yes, I. I may have had my feelings hurt. Well, yeah, feelings hurt shouldn't be considered in the same sentence as someone who was sexually abused. Right. Um, but, but there is like, if I, if I think about other types of organizations, it feels like, uh, there's a broader variety of, of failure in, at leadership levels. Than there is in the Christian church, and I don't know what that is, and and maybe this is my own confirmation bias, or maybe this is like you know. I like that you did that, Andy. Good I'm check. Self-selecting, <laughs> but it, but like I don't know, I don't know the last time I heard of. Maybe uh, it's more under the microscope of of uh, like some financial right fraud being committed. Enron. Maybe that's just not as interesting. Is what you're kind of saying, like uh, it's not that interesting, so it's not going to get airtime. Well, I think. 
public school teachers, police officers, pastors, uh, they're under the microscope. If something the three goes, P's. If something goes wrong. If something goes wrong, it's a triple P situation. Then it's just something. It's like a car. It's it's a NASCAR wreck, and people die. People want to watch that. And also, no, my point is a little bit different, though. I'm just saying, like, why is it specifically in Christianity and like extended to Catholicism when there's a controversy and a and a failure from leadership? It seems like the vast majority that we get to learn about is sexual, sexually related. I think I, I think, have an answer. No, go ahead. You but I think first. that's what gets, I think, because the other stuff just doesn't... Not interesting. No. I don't disagree that gets, that's part of it. Gets back to the car wreck. Like, I, they're doing, like, you think this stuff is probably happening maybe with the same level of frequency, but because it's not as, quite correct. literally, as sexy, then it's a, it won't get airtime. Intended. It's like NBC going through news, uh, no, no, boring, done it before. Ooh, look at this. What's NBC? I think that's part of it, uh, but I will not only that, but also you guys with sex in general is super taboo for Christians. And there are silent sins, like I mentioned before, pride, self-righteousness, uh, underlying that usually come with personality disorders of people that are drawn to positions of power in general. You mentioned police officers. Um, I don't know about public school teachers. They're probably lower on the list, but people in positions of authority, politicians, police officers, clergy, all rank high on personality disorders that are, that go into those fields. So there's something of this, like you hear the phrase power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think you can flip that and it also works where people who are broken people are drawn to that power. And so yeah. if kind of like being wealthy or coming into money will just reveal more of who you are. I know people that build businesses that are extremely wealthy now that are the most generous people. They didn't become generous when they became wealthy. Yeah, They were always generous in whatever little ways they could be. And now that they're wealthy, they're super generous. And Can then, you introduce me to some of those yeah. generous people? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We should we should start a a seed of a, a seed event that's more like planting your <laughs> sorry I don't know what I'm saying don't what are you talking about oh, don't gosh. waste your seed talk uh, <laughs> uh, a round of funding for our podcast well I'll, I'll hit them up that's great um but these types of people are drawn to these positions and so the the brokenness that they're bringing in is different than just like, oh, now I have a little bit of sway because I have a ministry now and that corrupts you, which happens as well. So silent sins like self-righteousness and pride often go unnoticed. Anybody with a personality disorder that's a good leader and a good communicator goes unnoticed until the shit hits the fan. So some of it is it's sexy, it's salacious. If it bleeds, it leads. Some of it falls under that. Yeah. But I think some of it does go to Christians in general are uncomfortable talking about sex, anything related to sex, even in positive lights. Like, oh, don't talk about that. Keep, let's keep the sex talk down. And so when the sex sins happen, they're bigger than the pride sins or the he's overbearing, he's bullying. That stuff takes longer to manifest and get rid mm. of. And maybe it's a... Uh like a little harder to pinpoint to yeah, the silent nature silent synth that's yeah. my that's actually a game um i'm i'm developing a game called silent sins and then hopefully we'll have silent sins two and three and <laughs> do do we want to play any of these videos uh now <laughs> it, it feels like we've I, introed i thought we were done there yeah i know well it's been a great podcast <laughs> and i i uh, appreciate both of you guys <laughs> We'll hit pause and we'll talk about our secret sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. I feel like we're missing context so, here. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about Robert Morris uh, more in depth. Who? No, uh, no producer today. No producer. So Andy's getting up to initiate picture in picture. Um, perfect. Hundred percent. Yeah. So here's a little news snippet, kind of updating Robert Morris, who allegedly. Allegedly abused a An underage girl, underage girl from twelve to fifteen or so back in the eighties. Yeah, yikes. 
There is new fallout tonight after a megachurch pastor resigned amid claims he sexually abused a 12 year old girl. Four members at South Lake's Gateway Church are now taking a leave of absence. By the way, right up, right off the top, and we can do this. Just tell me when you want to stop. The news, it makes it, it makes it look, this, now, this is not a caveat, but it makes it look like he now, it makes it sound like he now just molested a 12-year-old girl. Oh, they're leaving out this. The fact that he was 22 right. or 3 or 4, it doesn't, it doesn't make it better. But it's just one of those things where like the news is trying to amplify it to dial it up to eleven right away. I honestly I, I watched this I watched this video. You guys uh somebody forwarded it to, to me. I that's what I thought. I thought this just you happened. Thought it was new. That makes sense. That's a that's a move that the media will do. All right. and, and he looks so happy now. Robert Morris resigned earlier this month after a woman came forward claiming he sexually abused her back in the eighties. Gateway hired that hair is now terrible. legal team to investigate the claims and what the church knew about it. That legal team has recommended three members of the Board of Elders take a temporary leave of absence. They've also asked Pastor James Morris, Robert Morris's son, to do the same. In a statement, the church writes, a leave of absence in no way whatsoever assumes or implies that any elder had any knowledge of the true facts related to this situation. Nothing to no see here. Charges have been filed in this case. That's well, a, kind of. That the it's it's standard. Yeah, it's a standard move that they do. Um, uh oh. No matter oh, who you oh are. Oh God. Uh, let's talk about makeup. <laughs> So <laughs> initial thoughts there from you, from you guys. Um, what, what sticks out to you when you, when you see that? Okay. First of all, when they talked about the elders, the three elders, and this was over two decades ago. Yeah. I'm like, how long do you get to serve as an elder? It's like 20 plus years as an elder. It, there's that part's you, confusing to me you, too. You start to have some control of your church, which probably is not healthy. I don't think that they're still elders because it said they served during that time. But, but they then, said the elder... But, but then oh, they're you, like asking them to leave, so maybe they're asking them to leave the church? No. They, I thought they were saying step down. According to that one, they're current elders yeah. and his son is a current pastor. And so it... Well, it, it, it Technically, it's because they might have a conflict of interest that the lawyers are like, you guys need to step down. So... It's it is unclear. I've I've seen a few different uh, bits of information about this, and it's not clear if they've been like steadily elders ever since, or if they were for a period and then they've come back. Because to your point, twenty years feels like a long time to be an elder. Yeah, steadily elders is Jeff's new band name. Steadily elders. <laughs> That's a good name. Yeah, not bad. I like that. I mean, I wouldn't go see that band. They sound like they're probably shitty. But It'd be like if Trump and Biden formed a duo. I mean, the- I mean okay. sorry. The implication hey man, is that mu- these three music you knew into? something. They knew something, or they were the elders at the time, and they're like, step aside, because... It's we, legal. So Who knows? What we do know, though... We don't know anything. We Well, we do know that this woman, at the time, when it came... It came out back then, when he was 22, 23, 24, yeah. and he did... He said he stepped down for two years... Because of this, he admitted to inappropriate contact with a young lady. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What? Yep. What? Are you an elder of this church as well? No. How do you know this information? I just did pre-show research. <laughs> oh, um, and he admitted to inappropriate contact with a young lady. Dun, dun, dun. Ac- according to his words. What? Now- That's the, right. Young lady was the, the terminology that was used. And so- People that were involved back then are now saying, like, we didn't know she was 12. And officer, so, but he did confess that it was inappropriate. Yeah. Now, according to, well, maybe we'll get to it in her clip. We have a clip from uh, Clem, Clemishire. Her last name is Clemishire. Uh, Cindy. Cindy. Yeah. Cindy Clemishire, I believe. Uh, and I'll, I will self correct as soon as I'm we so watch worried this. for these clips. I'm so but, worried for these pastors. <laughs> This is terrible. You're worried for the pastors? I'm I'm worried for what the video... It's almost like watching those shows where you're like, I know what's coming. This is not going to be good. Uh, I hate to I hate to see it. 
I hate to know that it's happening. I hate to know that it is happening. And uh, just. I had something. I had That's all right. You can. You got I it. had an article queued up for something else for a little more background and obviously I messed that up. But um so the church is claiming they didn't know. They didn't know the extent of it. They didn't they thought it was a inappropriate sexual contact with maybe somebody who's young but not under 18. Um but this goes to the broken people going to places of power. When you're 24, 25, 23, whatever he was when this happened, that he self-confessed it, w- it was inappropriate um, and that she has claimed was um, molestation over four years, um, culminating by the end, there was like penetration via objects, um, which is alleged. I don't know if he ever confessed to that. Hmm. We know we know it's inappropriate that he confessed to, but he's, he's a kid. He's 23, 24, whatever it was. That's like, you don't just do that. That's not, that's not, Hey, I cheated on my wife. I was, I was drunk. I was the first time I've ever had any sort of, yeah. Yeah. Like, which obviously stepping out, cheating is not good. Um, and all that stuff. But, it's at a different level than grooming a kid yeah. to feel comfortable because in the clip we're going to see, she talks about how he wasn't mean. Yeah. And so it was confusing to her as a, as yeah. a young girl. She always thought molestation is, oh, they're mean. But no, mm-hmm. he, he groomed her. Like he made her comfortable. That sort of thing. Let's go to the clip. Yeah. Let's go to the clip. CBN News. Hit it. Everybody. The scandal involving Robert Morris continues to reverberate throughout Christian circles. The Gateway Church founder resigned amid allegations he molested a 12-year-old girl in the 1980s. His departure came two days after issuing a statement admitting to, quote, inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady. Morris added that he had confessed, repented, stepped out of ministry to receive counseling, and has since walked in purity. Today, we... You are... What do you guys think about that? Since then, I've walked in purity. The first thing that came to mind was I thought it was weird that there wasn't a little bit more digging from the elders when he said it was impropriety with a young lady. That felt like maybe uh, myself being an elder, I, I would have taken some time to go, well, then we need to understand the depths, like the details of what's going on here, not just... Uh, vagaries knowing you andy i just want to say for everyone involved that uh andy is the wrong overseer on the board if you want <laughs> to be like but oh, we're cool right we're, we're good right i mean we are it was not mistake, cool but- <laughs> not cool at all no uh, that just feeds andy's flame which i love every church needs an andy to be like wait what the fuck did you say Dude, that's, but I mean, I think each one of you guys in that same situation would be like, yeah, this sounds bad. Um, You need to be specific. We need to exactly oh, understand what's going on here. And if they didn't do that, then they're, then they're neglecting their duties. <laughs> they're still on the board. So yeah. even if it's technically correct, like some of them are claiming right now that we didn't know the extent of it. So if they didn't know the extent it of it... It doesn't get him off the hook. It doesn't get him off the hook, but to some degree... No, I'm it doesn't going, get them off the hook. Yeah, th- them <laughs> either, right. Even yeah. If you walk down that path, this comes up, the pastor... The pa- he was the pastor, lead pastor. Okay. So It was before it was he, technically, to be clear... He's, it was, early, he's hold mid-20s? On. It was before yeah. it, wa- it became Gateway Church. Gateway Church at this point is just giant, like in the here and now. Right. Currently. This was before it was technically Gateway Church, but... Yes, it's an extension of his ministry. So they had like 14 families and... I don't, I don't know. Who knows how big it but was? My, my point being is if there was a board and he said, I, you know, was in a, uh, had some inappropriateness with young a woman. young woman. Young okay, lady. There's no way... Young woman sounds young like lady. she's at least yes, 20. Yes, young lady. Young lady, like... 
could be 14. Young lady, you better go clean be your room. It's so, right. it's so gross. But the point, if you walk down the path of where does that conversation end, it, sh- it shouldn't end. It should be like, okay, where's the, give us some details like, okay, who is this with? Is it somebody with the church? Is And, oh yeah, it was, you know, this family, so-and-so. Be like, well, then, explain a little bit more. Like, what happened? How, where was this? Um, how often did this happen? Those questions would come up. None of this happened, or I'm thinking the other side of this, the context of, okay, we don't want to rock the boat. Okay, you've done something. Uh, we just, and it, you know what? They're, you know, who knows? Like, could yeah, be like the family, like uh, they're unstable or, you know, we'll just kind of like let this go because they have no leverage in this church anyway. I, I'm totally throwing things out there that could be plausible in why this was allowed to happen well, many, and go how many, forward. How, how many times do we hear, like, I didn't want, I didn't want it to besper- besmirch the name of God or the kingdom. We didn't want to, like, alienate people. It's all in the effort to protect the yeah. institution that they're involved with under the guise of like not hurting their witness. We're wit- just getting started. Not hurting their witness. Yeah. Do you like how I just did that, Andy? I went like this. You're showing growth under, and, uh, and under the mic. Rabbit ears. You're evolving. But under the mic. <laughs> and I'm impressed. In getting real time. A, didn't even touch the mic. Actually, I've been wondering how long he let's can hold that his video. breath. Yeah, let's, let's get through this video. Conversation with his accuser, Cindy Clemishire. Cindy, I know the last few weeks, the last two weeks in particular, have been very chaotic a lot has come out in media about your story you have shared very openly what my private so i have had an incredible amount of support and i think that's what's kept me going so yeah and you know you have you have shared over the years you have told people your story over the years this obviously is a different level of that because it's been picked up by many outlets as you said you've done a number of interviews what what changed in you, and maybe nothing did change, but what led you most recently to share I was so interested openly, in this. knowing yeah. that it was going to have a bigger footprint this time? Well, like you said, I have been sharing. I think I started out just when I was in my 20s sharing with friends or, you know, when it, something might come up, share my story, not even fully grasping what my story was at that time, and really dug into counseling and um, just focused on trying to understand what happened to me because of the connection with Robert and Debbie and the family and the family closeness and friends along with church. And um, after I was probably about 35 when I really understood the depth and magnitude of what Robert really did, not just to me, but to my family with all the grooming. And then of course the sexual abuse and the emotional abuse, the mental, I mean, just it's every part of your being is manipulated during these, the, that kind of abuse. So at 35, when I was able to actually accept the term sexual molestation and that he abused me because it sounded so mean and I would tell my counselor, but he wasn't mean to me. And she said, it doesn't have to be mean. And I um, heard the term actually on Oprah that instead of calling them child molesters, we should call them child seducers. And when I heard all that description, that's when I started being a lot more vocal about my story. And like most believers, you don't want to do anything that's going to tarnish the name of God. There it is. You're not going to, you don't want to tarnish the church. You don't want to hurt other believers. You don't want to, you know, cause another person to not come to Jesus. And so, I never wanted it to be a big exposing, you know, I just wanted someone in leadership somewhere to take him out of the pulpit because we did not feel as a family that that's where he should be in leadership. When you can't even fill out a document, honestly, about working in your own church nursery, should you really be in the pulpit? Boom. And so anytime he would speak in a church that we were associated with or going to, um, in any way, either I would or my parents or my sister would go um, and confront leadership and talk to them. So if you fill out a form and say, hey, you're, you want to be in children's ministry, have you ever had inappropriate contact with a child? And you say, yes, obviously, 
oh, you don't get to do children's ministry. Right. And we should probably make sure that legally you're allowed to be out and about. Um, but you've been restored. You can go back into main pastoring. That's fine. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into that, but it's like... Well, she was saying that he was uh, not filling out those forms truthfully. Right. But that, but she also mentioned that her and like her sisters, went, whenever they would, if they were in some other church s- situations where he was speaking, that, that they would go and tell leadership, hey, look, this guy, look what this guy has done. So, like, why are we only hearing about this now? Yeah. This is odd. And she said she had talked about it before. Like, sh- she shared with, it sounds like she shared it with other people, she, shared, but maybe, maybe she didn't it, share like the who, but they're like, and it's just catching on now. I'm like, w- what are we doing? I, I don't understand. I, it's, I, I do not understand how she was talking about this. He had done something and she's trying to figure out what he actually did. Did you tell your parents? I mean, if you told your parents, if this all happened and the- Well, no, and he stepped down. Like he publicly stepped down at the time. Right. But not for the specific nature of it. But it was sh- more under the vagary of like, I need a time away because yeah. I've done this inappropriate thing. And it went, because it was a, back then, it's a di- totally different time, social media. Now, I don't know where this new, like this new spark ignited the flame, but it, you just need social media and a little bit of, the right gasoline from a, a media company to to be like right. blow it up. Into she the talks ether. about it a little bit more though, and and I don't know if it's. I, I think it. I think I am. I think I am correct. I think her parents were out to lunch because it's, it's like parents would have stepped in a whole lot more. Like, can you imagine? Like one well, of like, one what? of our girls. No, uh, 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 we'd be going. End the, well, we'd, be, we'd go to the authorities immediately. Like that person would be in prison. That's true. But I mean, I know that's true about us. I'm just wondering to to steel man their parents' position in a different time where you're, you know, maybe they didn't know the exact details of it from her. Maybe that's something that's trickled out from her. And so at the time, maybe it is a version of like even her. She didn't. Cindy did not want to rock the boat. She didn't want She's to hurt a kid the witness, at the time. right? Right, but even into her twenties and 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 what thirty five? Oh, I figured out this was molestation. How did you figure that out? Because of the things that were done to me. Okay, going back, those things that were done to you would have been told to your parents. I don't know what you she told. I don't maybe. know what she told them. Maybe well, that's then I go to the the parents really were just like people who were like, yeah, go hang out with whoever. Either checked out or she was young enough to where she's like, I'm not even sure how to handle this and I'm pretty sure it's going to destroy everything, so I'm going to bury it. I don't know. It, this seems like a perfect example of where for where a predator sees the when, opening. When the parent... Now, there there is something... I don't know if that's true in this case, just allegedly and whatnot, but what you're saying is right in that people that do groom they look for situations sure. where the parents aren't dialed in quite as much so whether he, it's true about this case or not that is a reality that you're describing my right. guess is what happened was uh, i think he he stepped down without her prompting anything so he stepped down shortly after this cuz remember he's in his like early 20s so he takes a couple years off so so it's almost like let me leave before i get fired i preemptively will step down from this situation. And then I'll, uh, so then she's processing this stuff. Cause uh, as she describes it, um, I think when we play the clip, maybe I'll let, I'll let, I don't want to put words in her mouth the way that she yeah. describes it. Why, why don't you go ahead and play it? And then we'll, we'll I will. Talking. But before it leaves my mind, Andy, you, you talking about the people knew even back then they knew that it was inappropriate with a young lady. And the fact that no more questions were asked, like that is just like blowing up in my mind. Like what the fuck were you doing? Like you're not off the hook elders back then. We didn't know it was a 12 year old. It doesn't, you didn't ask any more questions. That's why this thing is building because there are claims of, we didn't know, but I don't know if we'll get to it in this clip, 
there, like there are board members that she actually emailed and got a response. Like I don't mm, know if yeah. it, I don't know how recent that was, but okay. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I hurt someone. I hurt someone really badly. Like physically hurt them really badly. But you're sorry. And I think I should step down. Okay. Well. All right. Okay. Now we're. <laughs> <laughs> it probably didn't go. It probably didn't go like that. But no it's further some, questions. Yeah. No. I think I've heard enough here. Can I buy you a drink and we'll forget about All this? Right, let's hit play. And explain to them what happened to our family and to me. And not once has any leadership stood up and said, "This isn't biblical. You should not be in leadership. Honestly, you you should be gracious to this family and not be that you're not in prison." But. No one has taken him out of leadership, ever considered it, it sounds like. So as I've told my story along the way, um, I met someone who's now retired pastor. Um, he has been retired for a couple of years. He heard my story and he is a strong advocate in the Southern Baptist Convention to um, expose clergy that are abusive, especially to children. And he has a friend that D. Parsons, the lady that has the Wartburg watch post or blog, and he encouraged me to reach out to her and share my story because they still work together to expose and, and get this out of church. It really should be out of everywhere. We shouldn't have it at all in our world, but you know anything we can all do to work together. And um, statistics show that people that abuse children typically don't stop. Hmm. So that's well, always can a I, concern as well. Can I ask you something? Because you, so you agreed you did that interview. Um, mm -hmm. What she said, I, I went to the Wartburg watch and that was the webpage that I had pulled up oh, and, okay. that I failed on keeping the tab open or whatever. Uh, she's, she's not wrong. Like that type of abuse isn't something like, oh, it was a mistake. Like hypothetically, one of us has a drunken one night stand with somebody and gets caught like, Oh my God, that was a mistake. Like I, I love you. I don't want to break up the family. Like whatever I need to do to restore this relationship is very different than somebody at, in their mid twenties grooming a little girl before she's a teenager. Like that, that's a different classification. Yeah. And the data is that there's no, one-offs there there's no this isn't an anomaly now i don't have any evidence to suggest that he did not walk in purity as he said like I, ever since then i've been walking in purity by the way it's such a horseshit i just hate those that language like oh ever since then i've been walking in purity what whatever that means i hope he did but that type of person that does that Maybe he's an, anom an anomaly. The averages suggest it keeps happening or yeah. it doesn't happen once. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. Hit, you want me to hit it again? Hit play. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear his question. And that interview went very wide. Did you have any idea? Because what you were describing is a situation where you and your family were going when you were seeing that this particular pastor was out there. Robert Morris right. is out there getting a new position or going somewhere. You would go out there and you would let people know. And you said that people, nobody really stepped up to the plate to stop that at, at right. all along that way. So did you have any idea that when you did this particular interview, that it was going to have such a monumental effect? I mean, he has since resigned from his position. It has, right. It is one of the biggest faith stories uh, of the year at this point. Right. Did you have any idea it would be that big of a story? Faith story. I mean, that's weird. I, I, I did. I think because his church is one of, if not the largest me mega church in the U S and um, anytime you have that kind of publicity in anything, I think something like this is going to cause an uproar. Um, I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because for such a time as this, I don't, all I can explain is God's timing has aligned. I would never have been prepared for this myself um, any sooner, I don't think. So I'm 54 years old and I just, I know that my maturity level, just being a mom of, you know, trying to protect my own children, I could not have walked this path 
that I'm walking today any sooner, I don't think. So I do believe that God's timing is part of it. And, and I do believe that he's going to use it probably to reveal even bigger things. I don't know. There's things that are starting to come out of the woodwork. So we'll see. I just hope and pray there aren't a whole lot of other you know, victims. But that's part of it, too, is if there are, mm. get help. Come on. You know, let's let's get Bring on the to recovery that yeah. is lifelong. You know, I think that it's important that she's explaining there. Maybe if I'm if I'm reading between the lines of what she's saying, she was younger. She was processing this stuff. She didn't. Maybe she didn't have the words to describe it. She didn't have the way to fully wrap her head around it. I think she'd also describe that it was like she felt like she was seduced as a kid. It was or the, the what was the way that she phrased it to her to her um, therapist. It was, it was wasn't something mean. like he wasn't mean to me. Yeah. And so it, at some level she didn't I, I'm I'm going to put words in her mouth but I imagine that means she didn't feel bad or or as badly or bad in the same way because of what was happening to her and as a result that would probably put a for sure it puts a kid in a weird place to be like ah uh, I don't am I supposed to how am I supposed to feel about this So uh, I think there's probably some skepticism from people hey why now and she's kind of trying to address that right and and what I gather from her response is the reason why now is because uh, it took me until this point in my life where I could fully process and understand this stuff and be able to like speak to it at this level. She right. talked about sharing with other churches, which kind of sucks too. If, if I don't know, let's give this hypothetical guys. Uh, you are at a church in a position of leadership. Let's say you're an elder on the board and someone comes up to you and says, Hey, You've got this new guy who's going to be, looks like he's going to start te- teaching at your church. Let me tell you something about him. How do you respond to that? Oh, and so, he tells me what? Let me tell she, you. She, she's, oh, she, 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 she described this. this. Yeah, yeah. She described being at other churches, going up yeah. to that leadership and saying, hey, let me tell you about this guy. And said that basically there was n- effectively no response from those yeah, leaders. Yeah, follow up. There was no follow up. There was no change. There was no difference. It was, it like fell on deaf ears. So I'm asking you guys, if you're given a situation, she comes up to you and says, Hey, let me tell you something about your pastor. I think you should know. How do you respond to that? Yeah. Uh, I, I do what should have been done years ago, which at her church, which would be, let's set up a date to, you know, a lunch to sit down, talk about this. Tell me, you know, the history, where you're from, how you know this pastor, and and go about it that way. And then when it comes up, yeah, he stepped down for a couple of years. And they're like, he did step down for a couple of years. Okay, the red flag should start going up, and then it should this should be nipped in the butt pretty quick. And in the butt, he, yeah. And I then the elders sure in the bud, but whatever. And then the elders, I'll take in the bud. Would what? be talking, would be having that conversation with this pastor. So that's, I mean, it seems normal, and that's why I'm like, what? Who the hell keeps dropping the ball in these situations? Yeah. I want to go back. I want to know, and, and I think I, this story is not done. No, it might just be beginning to where it's like we're going to uncover correspondence not we although that would be a scoop if there we was, uncovered there was correspondence between her and him I, so I read a little bit on this she sent an email to him and basically said a couple of years ago hey I want you to I want you to pay for my therapy I think is what she was saying I think you should pay for my therapy and his response was something to the effect of um, my, my attorneys told me not uh, that I shouldn't be paying you and the, and that that would put you in a situation. I think basically, he was alluding to, hey, the way that you're going about this can be construed as blackmail. Um, so this is not the right way to go about it. Not, I'm not letting him off the hook. By the way, right? I'm kind of interpreting the events now. Also, was, that that is possible, like in a weird, fucked up way, where the uh, like if this goes yeah. to court, his legal team would be like. He threat. She threatened him with you know if whatever. You don't pay me. Yeah, I know. And so she's hurting. I'm uh, imagining 
And so if you're hurting, you're not going to like think about going through all the proper legal channels to do this stuff. But uh, there is evidence that one of the elders at the time got a hold of the email and responded to her. So, and her email is like detailing, hey, you did these things. People who do these things don't get off the hook. They pay money, they go to jail. And you haven't done any of those things. And so this elder got it and kind of reached out to her and was like, hey, let's talk about this kind of thing. So that, the reason I mentioned that is that it, um, it, it kind of shows, it shows you that there was some deeper awareness at the elder level of what was going on there. And that elder should have been like, let me validate this thing. If this is real, we should be going to the authorities and talking about this. I don't know if statute of limitations stuff works out, but... In Texas, it doesn't. Well, reputation. So, I mean, what what do you mean in Texas? I think... There's no statute of limitations? I don't remember. There was two states that where this could apply, and I don't remember the details, okay. one of which has a statute of limitations. And I think... In Texas, the stat there would be no statute of limitations on this, so there's potentiality for juiciness when it comes to uh, yeah putting him away or or legally okay. g- getting that that stuff. So that stuff, you know, that's a technical le- legal term. Obviously, Jeff. No, I just don't know. I don't know where. I don't know why this continues to happen. Where. Later down the road, 10, 20 years, you're like, how many adults drop the ball or elders, people in charge, people in leadership? Yeah. Why? I I mean, I'm going to answer my own question a little bit. And it's like, uh, we don't want to rock the boat. Oh, something happened. Okay. Um, he served some, he stepped down. So he kind of served, you know. A little bit of time away from this so you know doesn't isn't he you know have the right to come back and make a living type of thing and uh, I, with tithes and offerings it's, oh Fuck my that. gosh God. Did, is there some like did you guys at any point in time in your mind go to any connection between these types of indiscretions that's a really the nicest way i can describe it um and Sin. the inner the entertainment industry of which there's been plenty of examples of this as well of of inappropriate behavior towards like child actors and stuff like that diddy i'm looking at you you know uh, my it, mind didn't go there i actually but, reached out to diddy but he hasn't <laughs> gone back to me but the point yeah like there's a what is is there some sort of strange additional connection? Is it the same sort of personality that's like the power hungry personality? Institutions of power, and that kids are more vulnerable to being because there's so much over powered over because, because there's so much trust. These and, well, and they can't fight and back. In, and in entertainment, there's money, and so you know things get blurred. I bl- I think I I would say I. I know things get blurred just from having heard all the terrible stories in the entertainment industry where people are like, well, we just, you know, we wanted to make it. So, you know, we just did what we had to do or I did what I had to do. And it's females and have you seen men, Justin uh, Bieber? He's a generational talent <laughs> and men, you know, just falling into the, he is. you know, this will be okay. It's spilled. Yeah, with the entertainment stuff, it's it's the quest for money might lead you to make mistakes. I want fame. This is the path to do it. I'm going to compromise and sleep with the producer. Or, or ch- no, I'm thinking of it differently though. I, I'm I'm talking about like I was going to contrast or, it. Oh. Child or child actors who the parents might even have a glimpse of like what might be happening and they'll be like oh, they look the other way this is 100 percent getting shit, to live their it. dream <laughs> right i feel like we haven't said 100 percent in like 14 episodes and <laughs> i just did it i'm sorry we still haven't but the connection the connection back to the, <laughs> to the church is there's trust a pastor's to be trusted elders to be trusted the people who are serving in the church or to be trusted and if you're a kid if you're if you're a kid her age and there's this young pastor that's um in his time like you know this 
charismatic guy that has a gift for speaking yeah and is like it closer to god than you can be and you just want to be close to god and be loved by god that's a seductive pull and so it's not a a stretch unfortunately it's it's not a stretch to where it's like hey we are going to or not we um where she's looking at him and it's just like he it's way easier to groom somebody like that. Yeah. And also going back to your question about what what were her parents doing? And maybe they were just yep. full full out they were identified with this church like this is the way um they're And they're ultimately gone. it's it's people join a team when you when you identify with the church it's your team, it's your tribe. And so your impulse is not going to be to oh I heard this thing about our main guy Let's really dig into this. Your impulse is going to be that's probably not true because I know this guy. He's good. And so you right. you defend the team and the tribe first. Like all of the people that you follow. <laughs> but that is your reaction. Whoa, how could this be? This seems so contradictory yeah. to what I've known. Uh, this it's it probably at times felt impossible like Rav- right? ravi zacharias yeah. when, when i first told you you're like no no uh, right and for good reason yeah like i'm not i'm not throwing you into the bus at all jeff because, no, because i had learned so much from this person and then I, all of a sudden so, i'm like so how could someone give so much and do so much good and at the same time like have this secret darkness that's existing behind closed doors right and then a lot of and then at times maybe you know 20 years ago 30 years ago whenever this you know happened people are like okay well let's just let's just keep going because this this the good outweighs the bad here right the human ability to convince themselves that what they're doing is right and true and just is incredible so in ravi zacharias's case it's possible that he's like I'm making a good living off of this. And so I'm going to take advantage of these Christians. This is like the worst case scenario. This is like the worst interpretation that that he was just taking advantage of it. But more likely, and the scarier thing is that he believed what he was saying. Some of what he said is true and right. And also he was doing these things in, in, in his words, according to some of the massage therapists with the inappropriate touching where he would ask for extra special services like the inappropriate touching you just did to your microphone, microphone you're welcome <laughs> that's barely coming through andy i know i've bumped it in a way that it comes through that was barely one but where he he tells them like i'm doing so much for the lord like i deserve this like i deserve this is one of the quotes of the alleged quotes and the reality is he probably believed that, which is the scary part. We can convince ourselves that we are doing the right thing. I deserve to do X that is not good because I'm doing more good the than only, that. The only exception to the which Ravi's, is wild. Yeah, the only exception there, Ravi Zacharias, I think, passed away before he yeah. he didn't even get to defend himself at all, and so that was just allowed to. Yeah, but there was like, its but the ministry basically the, there was like recordings back. and text messages and voicemails. And the ministry was, basically, without officially admitting to all the stuff, you can read between the lines. Like it was a version of that was happening. Here's what I, here's what I imagine is probably not an uncommon situation. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if more often than not, you have people in these positions of. Uh, I'll say righteous leadership mm-hmm. and they are their actions are scrutinized and they're held to such a high right. standard and that that brings with it a ton of pressure and so there's I would not be shocked if there's a point where they they're like they they feel stifled and like suffocated and at some point, they just go. I've got to like break out of this. I've got to do. I'm, I've got to do something, right? And it shows up in these ways because normally human beings have like pressure release valves. Oh, it's stupid. I I gambled on kids baseball in Reno when I shouldn't have, or <laughs> it's a thing, <laughs> or whatever the thing is, right? 
And instead it's being bottled up and held and it, and it like, because there's no pressure release valve, because they're on such, such, under such intense scrutiny, mm-hmm. boom, it pops up in really gross ways. Some acting out. Maybe. I, I'm, I'm kind of trying to theorize, like, what is the... There's why, truth to that. Why does this seem to start to happen with this type of person a lot? I don't know. The world may never know. But and you know what we all know? What you're going to read to us right now. Oh, well, <laughs> this is not what you're thinking. I know. I think I do know what it is. No, maybe it's not. No, it's not. Uh, so real quick. So this is from julieroys.com. Uh, Spit it out. Robert Morris resigns from Gateway Church. Victim says church knew details of her abuse years ago. A couple of quotes. Uh, Cindy Clemenshire said she confronted Morris about the abuse in an email sent in 20, uh, 2005, which we mentioned. Clemenshire added that former Gateway Elder Tom Lane responded to Clemenshire's e- email. Yeah, that was the one I was mentioning. Acknowledging that the sexual abuse began on December 25th, 1982, Christmas Day. Good God. In this, in its statement, Gateway's Board of Elders said the elders' prior understanding was that Morris's extramarital relationship, which he had discussed many times throughout his ministry, was with a young lady, not abuse of a 12-year-old girl. The elders added they did not know the victim's age or length of abuse, quote, even though it occurred many years before Gateway was established, so they're already they're trying to protect the brand. This was before Gateway occurred many years before Gateway was established. As leaders of the church, we regret that we did not have the information we now have, which leads back to the, what questions did you ask when you were presented with this information? What I wanted to say right there was fuck off. And so I won't say that. I'm not going to say that, but like we regret we didn't have the information. What other questions? I know I'm, I'm repeating what we you Andy mentioned, but would you guys, if you, if someone said, "Hey, I had an inappropriate um, relationship with a young lady," what would you say? How young? No, I don't know if I would have immediately. Not, I'm, not with you. Not initially. With anyone, though. It I, depends on the, my relationship. With, with, no, with you, my, I would have follow-up questions. No, yeah, but I'm just trying to say, like, so I'm my, putting, I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. Andy, and who it, was this? And it gets presented. Are that's, you trying? You're that's trying. That's the first question. Like, who was it? Yeah. Right. Ha- and at that point, maybe then it becomes like I oh, want the listener should know. Next, Cindy, Cindy's only 12 years old. Jesus Christ, Andy. No, that's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Andy. <laughs> I mean, things would get dead serious. I mean, dead serious. They would, would have be, questions. So, yeah. knowing you guys enough, my my first go to, yeah, she was younger. My first go to wouldn't be like you molested a child because no. I know you enough. My I would have follow up questions, and maybe that would lead to a rabbit trail of like we discover things like, Who's oh my god, what, and then maybe it would lead to. And I would hope, in spite of my friendship with you, I would, I would really want to know exactly what happened. So I don't think I I, I appreciate you. You're steel manning a little bit. I'm just trying to imagine being their in, like situation what, as a church. How could you possibly not ask that question? Right. And that, that's the only thing I can think of is if it's, hey, it was a young lady. Okay. okay. Yeah. But your point is your question is the one I would have asked. Well, who is this who? person? Right. Wait, isn't that that they didn't want to know that the parents don't care? I think it's too much, <laughs> and they they just send their girl to church. Yeah, they're Gosh. not going to know that either. <laughs> but what they what they do what they did do, I can I'm speculating in my opinion. They didn't want to know. They knew it was sin. They knew it was bad. Step down. Take a break. They don't want to know the details because then they don't have to deal with it. Out and of sight, that's the out of fucked mind. up part that yep. the chickens are coming home to roost, Bobby Boucher. And I hope they do come home to roost. Because th- this this is not going to stop happening, but the more we can hammer it in, maybe it will change the way churches screen pastors and Dude. look in their pasts. Because, because people, I, th- I think Christians, 
when people speak good, which I just didn't do there. That was a test. You didn't call me on it. When Christians speak well, I was thinking when, of something else. When a leader speaks well, and they're dynamic and they're powerful, we don't want to know real history. We just want to know. Oh, you're going to make our church grow. The congregation is growing. Lead people to money's, Christ. money's flowing in, and even in the best, you know, that's cynical. And I appreciate that about you, Jeff. I love that. But the best interpretation is like we're going to grow the kingdom. People are going to get saved. People are going to go to heaven. And they, we don't want to know. But maybe this can change the way we screen pastors because the type of person that's drawn to be a pastor can be really great. And oftentimes it's somebody with a personality disorder. Hold on. Okay. How would you screen for this? It's a good question, but I think we can do better. It's never. I don't know how. Quick question. Uh, Not going to be done better. How I'm, much? I, I haven't formulated the plan, Andy. How much molestation is in your past? Okay. <laughs> he said none. I think we feel good about this. Like it's. I. Th- Mark Driscoll has a church right now. Well, humans are stupid. <laughs> All right. Well, but, I, I'm providing evidence that he uh, now his wasn't that, sexual. You don't have to do any screening for that one. That clearly is like people know what they're getting into. But this people is hired, broadcast. which is why this. I hope this blows up in a way where churches really consider: like, does this person have traits of a personality disorder? Is there narcissistic tendencies? Well, what's tricky is that's a tough word to right. say when you got a couple beers. <laughs> and, and it's hard. It's hard because that can that can. That can manifest in positive and negative ways. Yeah, and people on that, people are attracted to people who bring that great energy, personality, and they they just will glaze over. Yeah. They'll just not even ask any of the questions that need to be asked. But then again, asking those questions, it kind of puts a downer on, you know, that type of interview. You'd be like... So, were you a molester? It's like, uh, no, I'm not even going to ask. We're well, not going to ask those questions. It wouldn't happen there. It would happen in the background. You would do like a lot of, re- a lot more research, a lot more detailed research in the background of that person. So, would they come up for him for Robert Morris? Yeah, that time. No, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not creating. I'm not saying there's a possibility of a Christian utopia here where we fix everything, but I think we can get better because I think Christians oftentimes are very naive. And they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to discredit the kingdom. And so when they have somebody dynamic and powerful that speaks well, that's very articulate, that will win out over warning signs. And so I hope I well, hope this... So it will win out over warning signs, but it often distracts you from any warning signs. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a difference necessarily in that. Well, one is I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they have these problems, but whatever. I'm really attracted to this. The other one is like I don't even notice those things because I'm like a moth to the flame, and I right. think most people are like a moth to the flame. I'm not even paying attention to this. You've got all of my attention on on these attributes and these characters because your personality has just sucked me in. Yeah, and so that's that's where I think we oftentimes uh, see what we want to see. Uh, but you're right, like going in with a critical eye. But I've been a part of lots of hirings in the church world. And you know what, man? People will show you exactly what they want you to see. I know. And it's hard. It's really it hard. It takes to, extra effort. It's hard. It's hard to find the creeps. And I don't even know. Emotional. It doesn't take extra effort. I mean, people... No, the background check. R- like, like going and talking to people that the person worked for before. Going to their former churches and talking to them. Who is this person? Going to former friends. That's all extra effort. That usually doesn't happen. It does happen. I'll I'll tell you exactly how it happens. You didn't let hey, me finish. Can we get some references? Sure. Let me give you some references. I will cherry pick those references, and then we'll go and we'll go talk to those cherry picked references, and they'll say what that person hopes that they will say. Right. And them. what I'm saying is, we can go above and beyond that, and to not just take those references, yeah. you can go. You can go to the actual organizations they were part of before. And whatever yeah. it is, like, I think we can. I know where you're going. We I don't can decrease under- this. I, I don't disagree with the ideal that you're stating. It is harder than it sounds. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I'm sure it is. 
I'm sure it is, but when it comes to people with uh, borderline personality disorders, if we can eliminate those people from the pulpit. Zach, ultimately, you just want us to do better. Yeah, can we can we do do a good thing in the church and just not do this stuff? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, speaking of doing stuff, <laughs> how, how about we do some uh, feedback? Because there's been some great comments in the comment hey, section. It's been it. You're more teed up than I. Hey guys, this story is developing, and we will continue to follow it, and we'll update you as we uh, see fit. So we will. Thanks for. Uh, watching for sure now let's do some listener feedback and okay i'm picking and choosing these uh okay what what episode is this from this was forcing spirituality which is from episode let's see if zach put the episode 239 you didn't put it on there you told me not to no you told me not to nope you told me not to it's in there 239 it was uh is the church causing atheism yes and so this was the forcing spirituality part one. And uh, Paul at Paul underscore heresy. Why do you guys have such a professional setup? If you have no viewers, this seems like all flash and no substance. Thank you. Thanks for watching at Paul heresy. And then hold on. Uh, Dave Millsap to the rescue. Oh, look, the trendy mean girls stopped by to give their substantive <laughs> opinion <laughs> On the furniture and appliances, <laughs> rather than on the topic being discussed. Nice, Prob- Dave. Probably made themselves feel cool with that zinger. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one yet. I that's didn't great. either. <laughs> the cool mean girl. Dave, I love uh, you. That's fun. Um, okay. How about... Uh, Is that like a reliever moment? It's like, all right, bring in Dave. He's going to be the closer. Dave's, yeah. like, Dave's like the big brother when the bully <laughs> comes over to mess with you. Yeah. You almost knocked down yeah, the hitting, jazz master hitting guitar. guitars out here. Uh, at Natasha F six eight eight six. That's the name of a bot. I grew up in the Assembly of God denomination. They teach that if you don't speak in tongues, this is not quotes, a bot. You don't have the Holy Spirit. Since I was unable to hype myself up and believe it, it was God. I never, quote unquote, spoke in tongues. The Am I actually saved? Insecurity lives on. Um, and then Jeremiah Bethel 4, 46, 19 responds, speaking in tongues that do not further the spread of the gospel is just gibberish or demon possession. Whoa. I hope you are with the true followers of Christ now. Whoa. So uh, my, my response to Natalie is, um, first of all, thank you for uh, leaving a comment. And... Uh, I hope that you can get past that insecurity of worrying that just because you didn't speak in tongues, you're not actually saved because speaking in tongues is not an indicator of salvation in any way. If it was, there'd be a lot more of us who would be in trouble. (laughs) I thought you were going to say, if it was, Joe Biden is going to heaven because he's been speaking in tongues. (laughs) Oh, guess what? He's going to heaven. You're going to be disappointed. (laughs) You are going to be disappointed. (laughs) Meatballs. Okay, so moving on to... Uh, Can you go to the main episode? The, if, why if I became an atheist? Or yeah. Which, uh, or is the church the cause of atheism? Yes. Okay, this is episode... Because I know we got a couple thought, thoughtful ones in there. While you're looking it up, I'm going to shout out new subscribers, Monica GG, Kevin Peach, Quentin Morris, Gunnar Rogers, Axel Stolen, and... New subscriber to the podcast. He was on last episode. David Ritchie. Oh. He finally subscribed on YouTube. Finally <laughs> subscribed after. Okay. Uh, there, there's some great ones on here. So this was, uh, what was the general topic? Oh, yeah. Does the, is the church the largest cause of, cause atheism. of atheism? Which uh, my wife, Lindsay, later on was like, well, yeah, that's not that controversial. Like, are marriages the biggest cause of divorce? I was like, uh... Actually, we, no, but everyone who gets divorced was married. Um, yes, they are, though. You can't get a divorce without a marriage, so... Which is, is different than the marriage-causing divorce. Cam... Do we want Cam Smith? 
Yeah, yeah well, let's go. Cam Smith, not He's a, a favorite. Bot. Cam He's a Smith, favorite. not a bot. LOL. Okay, definitely had several thoughts, but could definitely relate to the coming to faith through logic and reason. Have you guys thought about sharing what you you've each personally been digging through, thinking through in the theology realm right now? Just found Andy and Zach's mention of the Wesleyan quadrilateral and the brief mention of inerrancy, both interesting. That also made me think of a comment Andy made a few weeks slash months back where he was going through Hebrews and was checking out all the cross references in the Old Testament. Was just curious as to how that went. Well, Ooh. Cam, just like everything else in my life, it fizzled out after a week. <laughs> as for the section, minus my family and my friendships and my marriage in the church I go to. But the topic of going through things we're currently wrestling with spiritually I is like, interesting. We could do that. I like that. And then as for the section on recent headlines damaging to the church, what are your all's thoughts on First Timothy? Timothy 3 being the outline for what qualifies pastors and deacons and using that to determine what qualifies a pastor to be capable of being reinstated. Very timely, Cam. I think that there are qualifications about being faithful to their wives, being above approach, and being worthy of respect. It seems like if we, the church, just kept those qualifications, those pastors should have been rightly removed. Are you really above reproach? Are you really worthy of respect and being faithful to your wife? If you're doing some sort of horrific behavior, sounds like you fail to meet the biblical standards standards and should be unqualified. But that's dependent on the congregation, elder but. board, bishops, depending on the church structure, to have the maturity to remove someone who should not be a pastor, per the outline in 1 Timothy 3. Do either of you want to pull up 1 Timothy 3, or do we just want to respond? Um. Yeah. I'll take respond for a thousand, Alex. I th- think it's it's fine. Keep going. Well, I appreciate that, Kim. I do. I want to. I value your your comment in here, and I don't think any of us would disagree. It's just funny that like I randomly happen to select yours in here based on what we shared earlier tonight, and I think we're all saying the same thing. Like, what is the deeper level of scrutiny that needs to happen in determining who is someone in leadership, and then if and when something occurs. That's uh, that seems like it's in violation of those expectations. I think that's the more important. What thing. do you do? Because you you're not going to be able to stop somebody if somebody gets hired and isn't in a position, and then you know they mess up for lack of a better word. Then it's how does the church respond? Yeah, uh, and it it needs to be lots of conversations it can't just be flippant it can't be emotional it can't be just some reaction um because these things are going to happen they're going to happen for eternity it will not stop people will continue to sin it's it's why we need jesus we're trying to hold on as best we can in the toughest of times so things are going to happen i think what cam's describing though is how much do you want to fix a problem versus avoid a problem i i don't think you, I mean, it, what are you fixing? I mean, you, you can't avoid it and you you're can't fi- fix it. You're, you fix, can avoid you're fixing it. a you problem. You can respond to it in a godly way. Jeff, are you going to molest a 12 year old girl? No. I don't think you are either. But if that, can we root out people that might? I think we might be able to do better. I think. What I just heard you say, and I don't think you're saying this and what the way I'm interpreting it is that, well, it's going to happen. No, my point that I was making, it it is going to happen. I know. Can we do better? How? Can, How are you going to stop somebody from doing that? Don't hire them. Don't. You won't know. How th- would you I know, think though? We can do better at knowing. I don't know, and specifically with Robert, Je- Robert, I almost said Jeffress. What's Morris. his name? Robert Morris. Jeffress is another one. Michael Trout, tell us what give us the, the answer, give Michael. Give us the answer of what will be the outcome of this future hire for the church. Wait, can we fix this? If, you, if so, nod your head. So it'd be like. If when couples, since you brought up marriage earlier, the couples. Oh, you're trying to shake the head. Couples no! are good. No! To- Sorry, Jeff. I don't know what you guys are doing. Couples who get divorced, it'd be like, ah, how can we stop divorce? Ah, uh, they should, they should have, you know, not married in the first place. That cheating is going to happen, Jeff. 
Uh, it, it, it is going to she happen. She is going to happen. It is going to happen. She is going to happen. So there's no way to know if if the person you might marry might be a cheater. No idea. Just like the people you hire, you will not know. The you have no idea take. whether Tanya wasn't a uh, great human that you belong together in a way that will, will Every, flourish. Everybody, uh, may most people, I would say, go into marriage with that thought. This They're is committing for their life. True. This is true. And then we have a lot of broken Okay, so my, my next question, and I'm trying not to be Kathy Newman. What you're saying is, uh, do you think we could be better about trying to root it out? Or there's nothing to be done? I, we just hire people that speak good. I don't... Th- Everybody makes a decision and hires someone, and then they'll then when it goes wrong, they're like, "Ah, we we could we sh- need to do better." How true? We we the, hope that it. We wish we could do no, that. Do you think we can? Though I we, think we can. I think Christians have their head in the sand. They fall they fall prey to, to good speakers all the time, and they they avoid like Andy was saying. They ignore research or ignore like warning signs or like, hey, I knew this guy when he's when he was this pastor back then, and I'm not sure about this. I feel like, uh, yeah, 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 but he interviewed well. So we do that all the time. Okay, that's our, not good. Our conversation here tonight was, who the hell dropped the ball? Like, why would questions not asked? So we can do better. Well, in this specific situation, it feels like idiots were running, you know, we're at the controls. Okay, I, I, I don't know what, Okay. Let's yeah. let's move on. If, the thing if, that I thought about while you guys are describing that is is red flags, and so to your point, Jeff, the idea uh, do red flags exist with this person? And we've we've all I think we can all immediately like imagine or remember uh, a couple that we've seen who whether they got married or not. When we looked at them together, we're like, ooh, red flags. Yep. This is not going to be a good situation. Mm-hmm. Right, and then there's others that we've seen. They're like, "Well, power couple, this is going to be amazing." Yeah, and so so there is. We as humans do have a lot of that intuition. We do pick up on those details, and and sometimes when we're not snowed or we're not seeing what we want to see, we're able to like ma- make those discernments. And I think that's kind of what you're alluding to is like, hey, maybe there's a part of the process that's missing where we we need to be better at like catching these red flags ahead of time when we're trying to select and install leaders how can we how can we be doing pre-selection versus right. clean up clean up after the fact because in a marriage situation obviously we see people like you described Andy where you're just head over heels over somebody you're blind to their weaknesses when you're hiring a pastor ostensibly there's a board there's a collection of people yeah and so maybe it's at the board level where you have the right people. You have the people that will say no, that will stand up to the crowd. And you also have people that are enthusiastic crowd builders. Dude. And so and so you will, you construct that board in a way to where you can hear different opinions about something as opposed to one person that's head over heels for somebody. That's where the marriage analogy breaks down a little bit. So I think we can do better. I don't know what the exact answer is, but... Yeah. And I know we're not going to eliminate it because predators are drawn to pastors, to pastoral. Predators are drawn to positions of authority. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Can I go to another comment? Because I think we've done some good loops on this one. Yeah, yeah, we have. All right. This is from at out of the echo. Uh, Also cool band name. Look, no numbers. Clearly a bot. Hey guys, first time listener. First off, the guy in the middle looks and sounds like Rhett, uh, like Link from Rhett and Link. Yeah, there were multiple times. By the way, we didn't mention Andy got a haircut. You I got were a haircut. looking shaggy. By yeah. the way, when you walked up, we, we did a little pre-gaming at our little restaurant before this. When you walked up, you looked taller because of your haircut. <laughs> For the listener, that's what I meant when I said the experiment has concluded. Okay. Like the haircut experiment is done. Yeah. That sucker You're is done. You're doing better. But there I'm, were mo- more than one person though. In our comments, that said, dude looks like Rhett. Or uh, I mean, Link. It's because Which, oh, one is Link? I, when Dave was on, go look at it. My hair looks extra w- terrible because I was wearing a hat all day long and I didn't. I took it off anyway. I'm a former Christian, now atheist. 
I do a podcast with my brother who is a Christian. This is something I've been meaning to cover on my podcast. I started deconstructing because I no longer see God as good. That part really doesn't involve the church. But young earth creation played a big part of my deconstruction. I personally think the prosperity gospel, young earth creationism, and IBLP. You guys know what IBLP is? Yeah, IBLP. That's the word for me. No. Oh, uh, got it. He's got learning disorders. Are the big reasons why deconstruction is so big right now? Those movements got really big when I was a kid in the 90s. We are now adults uh, having to choose what we really believe. So, same. Uh, same as in, what, wait, what do you mean? Same, same as in young earth creationism, like drilled into your head, like this is what the Bible teaches. If there's anything, if, if you deviate from this, you don't know anything, or not like that, but you lose everything. So, his, he made a comment That's how there. I was raised. The comment that stuck out to me was when he said, I no longer see God as good. And immediately... He didn't say there's no God. <laughs> my mind went to... <laughs> That's funny. ...a comment from a guest pastor that we had last week. And the guest pastor said... Not on our podcast, but at church. At church. At actual church. Guest pastor at, our, at the church that we all go to, the guest pastor said multiple times... God is in control. He ordains everything that happens. And I cringed at that because uh first of all, I I I don't I don't believe that's good theology. I don't think I, I and I think it's actually on the flip side, it's hurtful to a lot of people because the idea that God controls everything means that you now ascribe all evil that happens in the world to God. He is proactively committing those things. Yeah. And so for people who experience tragedy in their lives, then there's that puts God in a position where now he is the one who is actively harming them, hurting them. And I can see how this how if if that's the theology that was presented to you yep. out of the echo that you would be feeling like how can I tr- how how can I believe a, that this God is a good God? Look what he did. Um and the encouragement that I would have is, I think, the healthier, or at least where I'm at today, where I find myself convinced today. He's healthier than you out of the echo. Well, maybe. I don't know. But here's what helps Here's what helps me is, and you guys maybe chime in on how you feel about this. This is what I'm convinced of, is that uh, God is in charge. There is an ultimate outcome that God is is working towards for us and influencing towards. God does not control it. We are not pawns on the chessboard that he's moving around. Um, there is freedom. There is free will in the world and that God chooses to enact his Holy Spirit to inspire and, and move and enact change. And that change in the world happens through us and that we are drawn to God's love and the goodness that he presents to us. And, and our response to that um, comes out in our actions and that causes change in the world. I don't think that God is responsible for the Holocaust. I don't think that God was con- w- that Stalin was God's puppet killing twenty million people. It's for it's for God's glory, though. And that one is uh, I've heard that argument too. That it's as as a contrast that that evil is the contrast that God allows evil as a contrast to show the goodness. And that I yeah. don't I don't fully buy that one yet either. Maybe yeah, maybe that's. <laughs> If we have Mikey on, yeah, we we talked to a guy that reached out to us. Oh we, yeah, we met and got a beer with this guy, Mikey Jeff. You were out of town, and uh, he wants to talk reform theology, which does believe that God ordains all things. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a d- different episode, and we're I know we're ending, but I did. We did. I'm gonna try to be vague about this. Recently, uh, there was a tragedy in my orbit, in our ob- orbits, and some of the reasoning for not going to attend to to help or whatever. One of the reasons was like, it, well, if if the ticket price for the flying out there falls below this, I I'll know God wants me to be there, which falls into the like does god will it or not kind of a thing it's it's in that ballpark 
Oh, you're saying you heard that comment? Yeah, and it, and it's like, just just don't go, or don't give that reason. You don't live your life that way. You don't live your life in general like, if God wants me to get tooth decay, I won't. I'm not going to brush my teeth. And if God doesn't want me to get tooth decay, I won't. Nobody lives their life that way. But sometimes in pivotal moments, we offload our choices to, well, if God wants it to happen, it'll happen. Because it's a, it's a sticky situation or you, you're not sure the direction. So you're like, well, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. That's not how the world works. That's mm. not how anyone actually lives their lives. And so just, just be aware, wake up to that stuff. Like the idea, you still make choices in your day to day. So we don't get to know with certainty if God is orchestrating everything. I think it raises a lot of questions that are very evil and harmful to the idea of a good God if God is orchestrating everything. But that aside, if that's happening in our here and now, we don't live that way. We don't get to know. So don't don't use God as an excuse for not doing something or doing something. But I know we're landing. You we are landing. More? I'm not going to read it this time, but maybe we can get to it. Theo Skeptomai, you left a really thoughtful um, in-depth response. Oh my gosh, this one was long, right? It was really long. Yeah. And thanks for doing this, man. We're running out of time. Or woman, I'm not sure. Whoever whoever Theo is. Maybe you're Theo Vaughn and this is your like code name. <laughs> and I really hope that is Theo Vaughn because May your mullet live forever. It'd be great. Look at look look how long this comment is. It's probably the longest comment we got, but it's very thoughtful. Where's and, the name? And we won't do it justice right up here at the top. Atheist, right? Yeah, he's, he basically oh, says he's okay. an atheist. I'm teasing it, and, right. and I'll tease it for the next episode because I think it's worth us maybe uh, deconstructing a little bit. Maybe it could even be the topic. Uh, topic of an episode that we go into. We can we can take his his comment and uh, deconstruct it a little bit. Excellent. All right. Is it time for the plane to land? <laughs> Probably. So yeah. we didn't mention up top we're supposed to, but brosbiblesbeer at gmail.com. We did like and it. subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, because guess what? The more that you do this and the more that you share this and the more that you watch, the more hours that you get in, it gets us one step closer to monetization. And that's all and that's that all really it matters. matters. <laughs> because <laughs> then, So we could take plane flights everywhere. Well, so that we then don't have to purchase our own beer. But regardless, that's about uh, also um, on podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everything, subscribe. Uh, rate review wherever you get us, whether that's wherever. So and if we that's, appreciate it. And if that's too hard and you don't want to do any of those things, that's okay. Do this one thing. If you got something out of this podcast and you think someone else you know might also find this interesting or entertaining, share it with that one person this week. That'd be great. Yeah. Andy, and have you seen that show, Presumed Innocent? <laughs> Also, shout out to... Tell me more and send me a link. You mentioned Dave Millsap defending us on that one. He, Dave Millsap also had some thoughtful comments. Yes, thank so you, Dave. So we can't get to them all. We love you. And Cam, as always, you guys are right now are superstars. I don't know what this... Superstar. Super fans. I don't know what that is, but I'm doing gang signs now. Please don't fight us, gangs. Please. Put the gang gang signs. All right. Well, let's Grace, peace, cheers this thing. Grace, peace, cheers. cheers. All right. I missed that. <laughs> <laughs>